Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate GNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I am going to try to get the science so that we can unlock simple command modules and get the salamander pod which might be more heat tolerant and protect us when we're coming back down from the moon or Minmus. But if that doesn't work out then we're going to have to slow down before arrival or I might put real heat in because it's obvious that the heat is completely out of whack with our heat shields and real heat because that adjusts the stock heating so that everything doesn't die in realism overhaul, it actually readjusts the heat so that it is real heating, uh, then that will save us. But I'm guessing that that's not how most people play JNSQ. Most people playing JNSQ might not even know about real heat. So yeah, uh, I would like a solution that doesn't involve putting real heat in because that's not how most people play JNSQ. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that uh, we can not kill another Kerbal getting back. On the bright side, we have gotten some rescue contracts here, so we can get some more victims um, as such. Uh, so let's pick these up and let's just uh, go ahead and bring them down so that we have them available. But, uh, well, actually, uh, let me wait on that. Let's do the science first. Uh, so, Explore Mimus, this is actually, well, this involves Kerbals, and we can't bring them back from that distance. So, what I think we will do is just get the, get the surface data from Minmus and the Moon, since we have those contracts. So, yeah, I'll skip the aim at the Moon and miss for now. We don't have any deadline for that anyway. So we'll just get the surface data. Let's try Minmus first. Uh, in theory, we could do both at the same time. Um, now I've got myself thinking. Let me see how much Delta V I can pack into a surface lander probe and see if we can just go to Moon, get the Moon science, and then go straight to Minmus, get the Minmus science, and come back. Maybe that's possible. Okay, so I have built our rocket. I've played a few tricks, but there's no guarantee we are going to be able to do both the Moon and Minmus or anything at all. We will see. Uh, we are still under the 30 part count limit, and you can see I've used all of that. The 18 ton limit didn't quite use all of that because we're doing hydrolocks, but we are limited by the height limit. So I couldn't really add more fuel to this to get to the 18 ton limit because we we're right at 20 meters, and I only managed that because I tucked the decker in a little bit. So, yeah. Uh, these tanks don't allow radial attachments, so these are the balloon tanks, so that's why I wasn't able to add more fuel. But now that I come to think of it, uh, maybe we could add some using the Prometheus tanks, which are sort of the Titan tanks. These are the Atlas tanks. Uh, so I forgot that we had the Prometheus tanks as well. By the way, there's this radial attachment point, and sometimes it radially attaches, sometimes it doesn't, like right here. But this tank isn't supposed to allow radial attachment at all, but some points it does, right? This is the, the balloon tank that's not supposed to allow radial attachment, but, and it doesn't allow radial attachment here, but sometimes it allows radial attachment. Isn't that interesting? Now, because it didn't allow radial attachment down here, you see where the engines are? I had to play a little bit of a trick with these, and maybe that's one reason why we can't use the Titan tanks. So these are, uh, these are interesting tanks. I'll take one off and you'll see what I've done. <laughs> so what it is, is that these Atlas tanks have a node down there, you see? And that allowed me to put this on and have a second one. Otherwise these engines don't radially, uh, uh, don't uh, allow surface attachment. But because these Atlas tanks have those two nodes, I was able to put two on, so we have to tuck them in properly so that they don't annoy the height limit. Uh, these by the way are the vacuum version of the Perseus engine and it's got a really long nozzle as you can see. That suggests of course it's a vacuum engine so we probably shouldn't be using it at the surface but its surface ISP is 312 which is not bad. And we get to vacuum pretty quickly, 419. And 419 is a lot better than 404. Uh, 350, I mean, it's a good question whether the 350 would be better. Now we're using both at the same time. So the thing about if we made the stack with the Prometheus tanks, these guys, and use three, 
Uh, and of course we're going to be switching to Hydrolox, so... Let's just see whether this is a better arrangement here. So, that still doesn't get us more... Uh, but we could radially attach more fuel if we actually had the part count to do it. So it's sort of a a bind. I don't think we're going to get more out of this. These won't have the extra nodes so that I can attach two engines. The only other question is whether we uh, want to use the surface ones. So here we have 3,338 vacuum. And we have plenty of surface thrust. It's just that our surface... Uh, specific impulse is not that great. If we remove these, I don't have to remove the tank, the two nodes are there still. I mean, I guess that's not too different. Maybe better off just going like this. If only we could sneak some extra fuel on with the extra 0.4 meters that we have now. Okay, so this will be many moons. I haven't even talked about the probe. So we've got a Decker engine there. And that's because we might want to do stuff with it around the moon. I don't know if we'll get to that, but that's why I'm not using the eyesore cryogenic engine. That would be more efficient, but then whether we could actually uh, keep it along and have limited boil off until we get to the moon is unlikely. So we have two stages for the probe here. We've got this bottom bit here, and I'll just land on the bottom of the tank. Uh, this one will also land on the bottom of the tank because I noticed that as I hover here, the engine doesn't have a collider on it. So we are probably going to land right on the base of that anyway, so I didn't have to put extra landing legs. And if I was going to put extra landing legs, I already had a plan. Uh, I was going to use these control jets. The actual landing legs are too big, of course. Uh, even the nano landing legs, uh, well I haven't tried those out yet. Maybe we should. Um, how big are these? Uh, they, they could probably work out, but yeah, they're not that bad actually, I should use those, I forgot about those. But another option is just using these control jets, which are about the same size as those landing legs. And yeah, they, they could be landing legs too. <laughs> so that was a plan, but we don't need it, so we save part count. Anyway, so that little bit there has 1700 meters per second. It's uh, a mod propellant engine. It's got solar panels, thermometer, barometer, and the telemetry inside the thing. And uh, it's got little antennae, these omni antennae here, that are direct and have the right range. They have two kilobits per second maximum transfer rate. And then we have these, these are relay, helical relay antennae arrays. And so we've got two of those to relay with. And so this presumably will stick around and help as a relay satellite so I've put extra solar panels I've got an extra probe core here it's got the light experiment inside so that we have some diversity in our experiments and of course the fuel and our crow engines so we've seen those before and that is the setup there all right let's try it we'll do the moon first because it's harder and Let's see, SAS on, throttle up, and launch. Well, that's the sound. It's got the boop, the Titan boop on it, or the LR87. This has a pretty high thrust weight ratio with this, so we can turn fairly aggressively. Okay. Going through max Q ish areas. Very powerful rocket. Okay, staging. Staging. And fairings. Okay. We're getting a little bit high here, so I think I'll shut off here and coast a bit. I've limited the gimbling on these little engines because they have weird gimbling because they're vernier engines and we probably don't need all that much. We've got the the reaction wheels in the probe cores, we have two probe cores, might not be great but they'll probably be alright. Let's get these solar panels out. I still don't have action groups as far as I know. Oh, the solar panels aren't actually attached properly in a way. They're sort of spread out there. So I used these Omni antennas because they were 
light, and that saved us delta v. These should always be on anyway. Welcome Harbor Water. PSC Harbor Heliport. Huh. Guess those are some of the Kerbal Constructs things that are supposed to be added, but still don't think... Oh, now I've got Kerbal Constructs working. Well, that's magical. I have no idea how that happened. Okay. Uh, previously, when I pressed Control K, it didn't pop up, but now it does. Okay. Fine. Now we have con the Kerbal Constructs working somehow. Don't ask me. I just decided to do Control K because I saw all those sites there. And I went, well, when did those, those show up? A little late for the circularization burn here. Maybe I was a little bit optimistic about how much we would have left after this stage. Might have been good just to make this the relay part. Okay, we are in orbit. We'll have most of the transfer, but we're not going to be able to use this for capture. But then, if we use the cryogenic engine on this stage, and we had extra, we wouldn't be able to use it, so it's complicated. Okay, and go. It's gonna be tough with the next stage landing and getting back to orbit around the moon, which is what it's supposed to do. And so it would have been better to have all the comm stuff on here, because then we'd know the comm stuff would survive even if this stage ended up crashing into the surface because it couldn't make orbit and we had to make orbit with the top part. In retrospect. Okay, separation and ignition. Things have barely any plume though. Oh, that thing's wandering away. Oh, okay, okay, stop, stop. These things have a lot of ignitions anyway. Didn't try for that orbit. We're just trying to get uh, signs from the surface. Oh, it's not stopping again. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't stop when my... You can hear the click when my uh, throttle, my physical throttle, actually hits the zero point. But it doesn't really act like it's done it sometimes in this game. Oh, well. Anyway, we just need to make sure we get sunlight. We seem to be recharging just fine. Our little paddle ones are pointing at the sun. We'll get the other ones out. I don't think there's any reason to start the uh, experiments, but I guess the light one is new. I didn't pack that before. That one hardly is worth anything, though. But every little bit counts. Now yeah, we transmitted a radiation scan. Okay, we've got this other delta, however, the moon that we can communicate through, apparently. Or with, anyway. 7,000 kilometers, uh, no, it's not 7,000, 7 kilometers seems a little bit low. The moon's there. So I'll pull that orbit out a bit. Got the light experiment. I guess we're getting some of this stuff from the light experiment. And temperature scan. Moon space high, apparently we had not done before. Radiation scan, 7.2 credits. I just kept the science very simple and easy to transmit here, and it's working out. Eighteen point six credits so far. We need uh, basically ninety credits altogether to unlock the simple command modules. As far as antenna, we have a lot of antennae, and so what I did was I sorted by mass, <laughs> and after sorting by mass, picked the ones with the best best transmission speed. But there are a ton of antennae, and you'd spend a fortune trying to unlock all of them. Okay, here's the moon again. And we got moon space low from the light experiment. And temperature scan. I'm amazed we didn't do the temperature scan before. I feel like we should just directly land here or something. I mean, this looks nice and flat, doesn't it? I don't know if we've been here before. I don't think so. 
Unless it's the same biome, even though it's a completely different location. Yep, I'm just gonna land here. We've got comms. We've got power. I mean, we're uh, communicating directly back to Kerbin here. It's just perfect. I wanna be on this side of those ridges right there. Looks like it. Looks like we can do that, but we're probably not being super efficient here. There's that, that's that ridge right there. Now we gotta have to basically go straight down, which isn't great, but... Whether we can get back to orbit again is the problem, and I doubt it. I mean, not with that, not with this stage. So, that's a shame because it's got the relay antenna. Have to pack these up. Oh, we can't pack those up. Well, those are gonna break off anyway. I I didn't realize we couldn't pack those. I wanted to fold them again. Oh well. Unless we're extraordinarily gentle, those are probably gonna break. I couldn't have uh, put them any other way because uh, otherwise they'd be clipping into the body initially. Okay, final burn here. I probably started that too early even. It's got a lot of thrust weight ratio. Okay, going down here. Important not to make it so that you can't throttle down enough and still allow for descent. Uh, no boulders here. But yeah, we're not gonna have enough with this stage. Oh, don't go up. Oh, okay, okay. Ooh, the solar panel's held though. <laughs> We're landed. Sands stay from surface of the moon. Eventually something will happen. We've got telemetry being transmitted. It says landed. They're all happening. The light experiment, I guess, doesn't happen on the surface? Or invalid situation, yeah. It's a shame we can't use the mob propellant engine right now to give ourselves some extra delta V. But we can't. Just time warp here. Hoping that the soul panels don't suddenly break. Not that it matters, because it's going to be discarded anyway. Okay, we have no more files. And we can't really land in some other... I don't even know where the biomes necessarily are. I mean, they're sure... If there's lowlands, there's a lot of lowlands around here. And so, yeah. We have to figure out eventually how to transfer over to Minmus. Minmus is ahead of us. That's good. That's what we want, so it's good timing overall. All right, well, let's get going for a little probe. It's going to be discarded. And that means our transmission rate with these is not going to be as good as when we had the big helical antennae array, antenna arrays. But uh, those provide like 8 kilobits, kilobytes per second each. Each of these only do two, so we'll be down to 33% of our transmission rate over at Minmus. But, okay, that's how it is now. Oh, well, there goes that. Alright. Separation and ignition. And this little guy. Will try to make its way over to Minmus. <laughs> this little engine sounds like it's just breathing out really fast. I don't see any any uh, m any reliability figures for the engine, like how often we can ignite it. Like, is there a Kerbalism destruction feature on it? I don't think so. I think it's just infinite ignition, infinite time. Oh, keeping an eye on comms, of course. We're going around, so we probably don't want to wait too long. But apoapsis should still be fine. This little uh, orbital propulsion system module I picked, of course, because I still don't have any small mod propellant tanks otherwise to use the small mod propellant engines. and Or I could do with some small liquid fuel oxidizer tanks. We just don't have very small tanks without using these little preset modules. So it was the only option to have a small little stage. Okay, that's a good enough orbit. Alright, so now figuring out how to transfer over to Minmus. 
Okay, we have an encounter. It's not great right now because Mimus is actually going faster than we would like for a Holman transfer. So we have to sort of go there faster here. And we have to do a mid-course adjustment of 55 to get the ascending node right there. But then we can intercept it. We could probably fine-tune it a little bit at the ascending node. Ah, we lost comms, but that was expected. We're on the back side of the moon and everything. So I don't know if we're going to get comms for that maneuver, though. That delta is not relaying for us. And we lost our intended relay, though it would be in the same orbit, so it's no good. Um, I don't know if just waiting another go will make any difference. Let's say we do it right around here instead. We'll just adjust in Kerbin orbit. It's the best we can do. Let's just get away from the moon so that we're not constantly blocked by it. We just want a minimal escape here. Okay, 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 okay. Let's figure out the rest now. We already did too much here. Okay, quickly double check comms because we're getting close to where we're going to be blind. Uh, more than I wanted, but let's keep going for a sec. Okay, now, now, let's try and figure out something. Okay, we have a plot in spite of the communication situation causing us to be in this orbit around Minmus, so we're going to exit out right at our apoapsis. Not the most efficient thing, but it'll work out. It's only an 84 meter per second burn, and in a 15 meter per, per second correction made course to hit Minmus, so we will just do that. So, departing the moon, well not quite departing yet. But uh, certainly going quite far out from it. Let's see, how much total data have we accumulated? Oops, uh, these windows are getting in each other's way. Let me move that mech chip one. Um, we've got 49 credits of this so far, so we still need quite a bit more. Hopefully we can hit more than one biome around uh, on Minmus. Be good. And... go. Okay, well, within point one should be fine. We still have our Mimus encounter after the next node. Let's make sure we are recharging. And we can do a little bit more than that. Okay. Well, there's Kerbin and the Sun, and we have our approach. All right, on to Minmus. Well, let's make sure we're continuing to recharge, and then on to Minmus. Okay, we got micrometeoroid impact data, sunspace high from something completely different. Ah, Burke Wayfarer probe is still doing... That was the one that flew by the moon, and uh, we still have a contract for that. That was supposed to aim at the moon and miss, but it didn't actually uh, fulfill the contract. But it's still doing science and still communicating with us, so we're getting benefit from it. Okay, we are in Minmus SOI. Hopefully we'll have some signs going on here now. Though we already packed similar science on a previous mission to Minmus. Uh, now it's looking like our periapsis is on the opposite side of Minmus from our communication lines. So we'll try and capture ahead of time. So retrograde, but pointed a little bit up to keep our periapsis. And really, we're already captured. Okay, that'll be fine. That's a nice tight orbit, and we'll see if we can get some science before landing. Um, it looks like the daylit side over here would be good for communications as well. Let me just check whether we have anything running or whether we should just land. It doesn't have any files, so I'm guessing we should just go ahead and land to get new stuff. There's a little ice thing there, that spot there, seems interesting. Shouldn't that be something special? <laughs> I mean, that seems like something special. And try and hit that. Uh, 
Okay, well that should be close enough. Uh, might have wanted to be a little bit further to the east. Oh, much further to the east. Mimis sure rotates fast. Okay, let's try that. Just try to hit this spot. I don't know if it's anything special or not. Is that water? I mean, it looks... Maybe it's just clouds. Maybe that's a Minmus cloud. I don't know, but it's very localized. I don't know what's going on there. Well, I thought it was something special, but I think that that's a, there's, there's a Minmus cloud. Who knew? Okay. On the outside view, it seems to be moving, but here it doesn't. Well, I hope the biome down there is something interesting anyway. Something that produces a cloud, apparently. Highly localized, fast-moving cloud. We should get some... Hey, uh, the barometer should work if a cloud. Yeah. If we've got a cloud here, the barometer should work. But I bet it doesn't. We didn't carry one because I didn't think that we would get any science out of it. Really fast moving winds over here. We don't have a whole lot of propellant in order to hop to another biome though. Ah, as expected. We sunk down. Okay, well they should be doing something. Yeah, they're running. But much slower rate than with the other antennae, of course. We'll just have to wait. And Minimus rotates very quickly. So we're going to be in the dark actually pretty soon. That's not the best planning. And I got 12 credits for radiation. 9 for temperature. Okay, we've got all the things apparently. We hopped a bit. Okay, well, we should go towards where it's not so dark. Uh, I should have... Okay, we, we got lowlands is what we got. So we should go higher up. Maybe over here it's higher up. It looks like highlands. I mean, we could go here, but it's darker there. And we are going to end up being in trouble with the power. So we'll go over here and see if it's highlands. And I don't know if we have enough Delta V for that, but we'll find out. Oh, yeah, it's not going to work great. We're going to be litho breaking, folks. We've gotten 76 credits so far. We would really like some extra here. We may smack into the side of those mountains. How much burn time do we have? 21 seconds. Okay. All right, I like this spot. Let's try and stop. We'll be on the side of that thing. Mm, okay. Impact 20... Three meters per second. Or 25, apparently. Okay, well, let's see. What's the best impact sort of angle? Uh, oh, that feels bad. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that was just stage. It was just empty. It's fine. We're still a go for litho breaking here. We want to save the solar panels if possible. Okay, okay, okay. And... Okay, alright, alright, stop please. <laughs> stop uh, stop oh gosh don't break the antennae Freak. okay all right all right it's auto saving we've got our instruments we've got our solar panels we are not recharging though 
Where is the sun? Gosh, I wanted sun, but we we're on the wrong side of the hill. Great. But um, we are trying to get some science here. We have fulfilled the contract. We've got both of the science day from surface contracts. Just a matter of how much power we need right now. I mean, eventually Mimus will go around and we will transmit this science when it recharges. I want to see, we got the radiation data. And we got the temperature scan, 9 credits. We may have enough battery. Okay, yes, we did all of it. And it hopped a bit and we had enough battery. So, all done here, we got two biomes. And whoop. That was indeed Highlands. And we got 103.2 credits. So let's go back to the RD building and unlock the sciences that we wanted. Wow, I can't see anything on the surface right now. But RD building and enhanced survivability first, we needed. And then simple command modules with the Salamander command pod. Okay, we even got some extra. So, well, we will have to test the Salamander command pod. It's heavier than our Hermes. So, we are going to need to upgrade our pad and everything if we're going to use that to do moon missions. But, yeah, that will be a thing for the next episode. And we might need larger heat shields. Boy, it's dark around here. But I think I'll wrap it up here after that dramatic uh, litho breaking. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.